Good morning and welcome to Trinity Parish on this second Sunday of the season of creation. And um, um, our our bulletin reflects different prayers and hymns and psalms and all sorts of things that reflect our gratitude and expression of our connection to creation today. Blessed be the one who creates all things. This is the day the creator has made. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Creator be with you. Also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, having shown us how far your love goes in saving the lost and forgotten, mercifully grant that we may join you in the work of reuniting with all creatures through Jesus Christ, the wisdom of creation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Jeremiah. At that time, it will be said to his people, to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them, for my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this, the earth shall mourn, and the heaven shall grow black, for I have spoken. I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 14. We'll say the psalm responsively with the congregation responding at the asterisk. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt, 
The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all. Every one has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. Have they no knowledge, all these evildoers? See how they tremble with fear. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than ever ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she's found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have gathered, and when we look upon the faces around us, we see that the cycles of life continue. We've been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now let us bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. Please be seated. That was the Thanksgiving address of the Confederation of North American Native American Tribes, the Haudenosaunee in the Onondaga language. This address opens the week for children of the Onondaga school and they take turns reciting it. In the longer version, the address names gratitude, love and respect for Mother Earth who gives everything that is needed for life. Gratitude for fish life, for food plants, for medicine, herbs, for the animals, for birds, and for the trees, and for the elements of water, fire, air, and for all the earth. It is the connection with all beings and gratitude that's the foundation for the children's growth. Though the white European conquerors and settlers tried to exterminate the indigenous peoples of this land and in doing so, tried to also annihilate the belief of sacredness in all things, calling these connections pagan or demonic. The Native American author of that address still believes that there's hope for all of us in this North America and generously shares that Thanksgiving address with all who will hear. And like we heard in Jeremiah today, the peoples of the ancient Near East believed they were deeply connected to the earth and all beings. And they believed the divine inhabited mountains, bushes, and grains, they understood that their actions and their inactions could affect their ability to harvest fish and olives or to water their crops. The prophetic voice of Jeremiah names a hot wind, which was at once a metaphor of divine judgment and also a natural reality where a hot, want, hot wind caused the birds of the air to flee the fruitful land to turn into a desert, and the heavens above to grow black. 
It was a strange coincidence that I was writing this sermon on Portland, Oregon on Friday, that the sky there was turning yellow and hazy from wildfires beginning to spread. People in Estacada near where I used to live were being evacuated as the hot winds blew in from Eastern Oregon, the wildfires there and into the Willamette Valley. And a few days before I had seen the incomprehensible devastation of the fires from 2020 that burned off millions of trees and the understory in the foothills of the Columbia Gorge. And I could not help but recall the strong voice of judgment. The whole land shall be a desolation. Still, there is a promise in the prophetic voice that proclaims, yet I will not make a full end. And in that last phrase, we hear a hope for redemption, a hope that the peoples who have sinned against the ways of the land, of the sacredness and all things, that we will repent. There is hope in our choices. I talked about last week, hope that in God's mercy, we are not forsaken in our ignorance of how we turned away from our Jewish and indi indigenous ancestors' ways of oneness, oneness with all beings and of the earth. Hope that we will connect again. In what are commonly called the parables of the lost, Jesus has just heard a lot of complaining from welcoming all those Pharisees, not wanting all of the tax collectors and sinners, probably none of them, to be in the presence of all gathered with Jesus. All of the ones who were considered outcasts of the culture, all of them being united in community as followers of Jesus, as one in the living Christ. And Jesus tells of the keeper of 100 sheep who goes out and searches high and low for that one sheep who has decided to leave the flock, perhaps in search of greener pastures. The sheep loses his way back to the flock. He's lost his connection to the collective wisdom of the flock and the protection of the one who guides them away from danger away from predators who can sniff out the vulnerability of the one who's trying to go for it on their own. And Howard Thurman interprets this passage in this way. And why was he lost? He was lost because he was out of touch with the group that sustained him, the group that fed him that gave him a sense that he counted. That's all. And as soon as he was out there alone, he said, I'm just here by myself, nothing but me in all of this. And I want to feel that I count with others. And Thurman goes on and says, now Jesus says that God is like the shepherd seeking always to find those who are out of community with their fellows. And when they have found it, when they have found their community with their fellows, then all the world seems to fit back into place and life takes on a new meaning. Our mechanistic, hyper-rationalistic ways of believing that we are separate and out of community with all creation means that we're also disconnected from those who suffer from our actions and inactions in these climate crises caused by our altering, over-extraction and destruction 
of the natural balance of the earth. While I was waiting on the tarmac to fly out of Portland, I found myself reflecting on those who were being affected by the climate crises, by the wind and the smoke coming from the wildfires. These connections to the young airport worker on the runway ramp who would soon be breathing in smoke as he guided the plane away from the gate and then being laid off if the airport has to close. Connected to the dachshund that belonged to the unhoused woman who lived in a tent on the side of the road and had no place to go to escape the encroaching smoke. Connected to the hummingbird who could not access the blossoms blown over by the hot wind. Connected to the researchers, the inventors, the leaders who are working hard to design and implement green energies. And to the everyday folks who use their electric bikes and scooters to commute. Connected in the elements of bread and wine that unite us with growers of grain and grapes. In this season of creation, we're also connected in our prayers, readings, and songs with reminders to be grateful for our community of beings of the earth. The willingness to be found by the grace of God and to return recreates wholeness in community. Community with our faith and in our expression of gratitude for all of the immense gifts that we are given. And in that willingness, we become whole, one in Christ. So I'd like to share with you again our collect for creation today. Let us pray. Oh God, having shown us how far your love goes in saving the lost and forgotten, mercifully grant that we might join you in the work of reuniting with all creatures. Amen. Let us stand and rejoice in the power of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. Begotten not me, of one thing of the Father. For God, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come to an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Creator and the Son. With the Creator and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken to the Father. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people honor God in creation. 
Please remain standing, kneeling, or sitting as is most convenient for you. Let us pray. Blessed God, whose love calls the whole creation into covenant with you, and who puts in our hands responsibility for the care of the earth and its creatures, we pray for all to whom you have given life and being, saying, merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, our Al for Alan and Gail, our bishops, for Kate, our rector, for Michael, our seminarian, for our lay ministers serving today and all people. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Ascension Memorial Church in Ipswich, St. Stephen's Memorial Church in Lynn, Emmanuel Church in Manchester by the Sea, Ministries to the Homeless, Christ the King Anglican Church in Lynn. We pray for those celebrating a birthday this week, especially Gail Sherman, Don Bremberg, Janelle Carey, Nadine Goslin Smosky, and Charlotte Cunningham. And for those celebrating an anniversary, merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the well being of the earth, for its resources of water, air, light, and soil, that they may be tended for the good of all creatures, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the waters of the earth, for their careful use and conservation, that we may have the will and the ability to keep them clean and pure, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the mineral and energy resources of the planet, that we may learn sustainable consumption and sound care of the environment from which they come. We pray, merciful God, our planet and people in peace. For the animals of the earth, wild and domestic, large and very small, that they may know the harmony of relationship that sustains all life, we pray, For the creatures of the earth who do us harm and those whose place in your creation we do not understand or welcome, that we may see them as beloved creatures of God, we pray. For all who shape public policies affecting the planet and its creatures, especially Joe, our president, Charlie, our governor, and Paul, our mayor, that they may consider wisely the well-being of all who come after us. We pray. For all those engaged in conservation, in agriculture and ranching, in aquaculture and fishing, in mining and industry, and in forestry and timber harvesting, that the health, fruitfulness, and beauty of the natural world may be sustained alongside human activity. We pray. For the creatures and the human beings of your world who are ill or in danger, pain, or special need, especially Evan, Bob, Jerry, Jean, Ellen, Barbara, Anne, Kate, Jane, Steve, Dan, Helen, Cindy, Mike, Casey, Frank, Janelle, Lily, Mary Jane, Sarah, and Sherry, and others we may name, silently or aloud. We pray for the repose of the soul of Priscilla Putre. We pray also for those who suffer from the unjust, violent, or wasteful use of the earth's resources or their devastation by war that may 
that all may one day live in communities of justice and peace. We pray. For the gifts of science and technology, and for those who practice these skills, that they may be wise, visionary, and compassionate in their work. We pray. For the creatures and people of the earth whose lives and deaths have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet. This morning, we remember John and Mary Ellis, Michael Ellis and Stephen Ellis, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are lovingly given, a gift from John and Kathy Ellis. Keep your planet and people in peace. God, grant that your people may have in them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and guide us into harmony of relationship through loving kindness and the wise use of all that you have given. For you are drawing all things into communion with you and with each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and God's creation using the prayer in your bulletin. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have failed to honor you by rightly claiming our kinship with all your creatures. We have walked heavily on your earth, overused and wasted its resources, taken for granted its beauty and abundance, and treated its inhabitants unjustly, holding future generations hostage to our greed. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sin. Renew in us the resolve to keep and conserve your earth as you desire and intend, with grateful and compassionate hearts, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace. Peace to everybody worshiping with us at home. Peace. Peace, Ben. So I'd like to invite our vestry person of the day and co-warden Phil for announcements. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Parish Melrose. A few announcements to highlight. Uh, one, there will not be coffee today following the service, but you all are invited to the Victorian Fair uh, that'll be uh, starting from 11 o'clock on until about four this afternoon. Uh, and if you go to the fair uh, and walk the streets, please stop by the Trinity booth to say hello and to uh, have a chance to have a little more visiting since we won't be having coffee this morning. I do call your attention to next week where we will have the blessing of the backpacks uh, during the course of our service. and. Uh, followed by an ice cream social. Uh, so come ready for a little sweetness after the service on Sunday next. The following Sunday, uh, in connection with the Festival of Trees, which will be coming up in early December, uh, Carol has asked that uh, anybody who is uh, brimming with ideas of new things that we can look at for the festival um, gather here at the parish before the service that sunday that will be sunday the 24th uh, we will be gathering at about 9 20. Uh, the meeting will not be a long meeting but it uh, bring your ideas uh, bring your good spirit uh, and come ready to see how we can make the festival of trees another joyous occasion in the life of trinity parish There is one note of sadness to communicate to you. Um, Ann Kenny's um, treatment has not proved as uh, 
fruitful as she had hoped, and she is entering into hospice care. Uh, those of you who knew Anne know what a blessing she was to this parish and to the, everybody that she met. Uh, and I'm sure she would appreciate a note, a card, uh, a remembrance of some sort, uh, if you have the opportunity uh, to put pen to paper um, uh, in her honor. And I think that uh, that's the announcements for this week. Uh, so I'll uh, see you at the Trinity at, at the uh, fair at the Trinity booth. Thank you, Phil. And also in two weeks, um, my last Sunday here at Trinity will be September 25th. And if I haven't seen you before then, please come back to church so I can say goodbye to you. Um, it's uh, going to be a sad occasion, and I'm also um, excited and sad at the same time that I will be moving on to a new kind of ministry, an interim ministry with St. Michael's in Holliston. And your very competent and amazing co-orders, Kathleen and Phil, will be keeping you up to date on what will be happening next for Trinity. So please stay tuned with the newsletter and announcements so that you know what, how God is caring for Trinity in this transition. All things come of thee, O Lord. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, 
You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust as stewards, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, God, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By Christ's blood, Christ reconciled us. By Christ's wounds, we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. And so, God, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of Christ's coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah and Hagar, of Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God of all creation, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one people, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Christ, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises God through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation, amen. So I invite you into the Lord's Prayer, the version in your bulletin. 
As the wisdom before creation teaches us, we pray together. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God and whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your beloved community of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. This is living bread given for all creation. All who eat this bread share in Christ's body. the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So we'll continue with the closing blessing and post-communion prayer that's in your bulletin, not in that order. Let us pray. Create in us a new heart and a new vision, O God, that the gifts of your spirit may work in us and renew the face of the earth. May we be one with you so that our work is yours and your work is ours. Lead us to transform our lives to reflect your glory in creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go forth now to care for God's world. Use resources wisely. Share your knowledge. Sacrifice when necessary. Live in harmony with all creation. Go out into all the world as prophets of a new way of living and preach the good news to all. And the blessing of the Creator God, the risen Son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might always be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. to the world feeling grateful and rejoicing for the power of God in all creation. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.